Hi, this is the Daily Overpass. My name is Eric and I make apps! Now today, I want to talk about how, regardless of the economy, education is always worth your time. All right, so I've been talking to my kids a lot lately about the economy. They, you know, we see news stories about, there was a news story yesterday about from the car phone warehouse how they stated that fewer and fewer people are buying new phones. Like the mobile phone upgrade market is really starting to slow down. As the economy is starting to slow down a bit, the value of the pound is a lot lower and people are not seeing the, the benefits of upgrading their phone. So few, more people are holding off to do their next upgrade. Right, so just signs that the that the mobile phone market is slowing a little bit. Right, get one of those stories that you look at and you think, well, does that really affect me? I'm not really sure. Right, and there's also been a lot of stories lately, uh, which I talked to my kids about about how Amazon is really kicking retail's ass. Right, it's like even even Walmart is suffering because of Amazon. Amazon is so convenient. The fact that you can buy anything and have it delivered the next day, or you know, even in the states, I think they're trying you know same day delivery, all that kind of stuff. I mean, it's really, really scary. And my kids were saying, but that won't affect you, will it, Dad? I mean, if, you know, if, you know, Amazon, because it's even better because it's online and you're an app developer and all this kind of stuff. And I said, well, it could affect me. I'm really good at finding the worst case scenarios. See, the thing is, we're all affected by the economy. And I, you know, walked them through it. So let's say that Amazon continues to do really well and Walmart really starts to struggle or you know all retailers Tesco whatever they, they all start to struggle and they have to lay people off or they have to do more with less so they have to have more automation in order to just compete in order to just have the same prices and the same efficiency right so they start to lay people off those people they have to cut back on their expenses things like gym memberships and you know uh nice cars and um and apps you know apps would be a big one apps are a luxury they're not a necessity in most cases right so they start to cut back on those those uh those purchases and then it has a knock-on effect to you know the gym uh who they have to lay off people because they they have less demand uh the car dealerships have to lay off people and then pretty soon the entire economy just sort of goes you know, a lot of unemployment and then, you know, less people buying apps and then, you know, we, we suffer too, right? And we can think about what kind of stuff that we, we could do. We could say, if people start, stop buying apps, we could do more client work or we could do, we can move on to other industries, all this kind of stuff. But the thing is, we don't really know what we're going to do. But here's the thing. I don't want to stop using Amazon, right? I, I love using Amazon. I love the fact that it's so much more convenient. In fact, you know, once you start using it, you don't want to go back to the old way. And this is the way it always works, right? When Walmart was, was a huge thing. I remember living in Missouri when they opened up a huge Walmart uh, a few towns away. And it was so convenient. I mean, I went there all the time. And I know everyone said, oh, it's not really good for local shops and businesses. But the thing is, the local shops and businesses had one or two people. They never had what you needed. They closed at six. You know, this, a lot of times, you know, they, you know the, the owner may have been really nice, but the, uh, the people they hired during the daytime were kind of rude, and they were just sort of like, and it was a small town. If they didn't know you, you know, they weren't all that nice to you, all this kind of stuff. So for me, I prefer to go to Walmart, right? And I know it had this knock-on effect on, on everybody else. Right? But that's just the way it is. You can't take away progress. Right? This is one of the reasons why I have so much trouble with global warming is telling people to drive less is a really hard ask because we've gotten so used to having you know, cheap petrol or gasoline, having you know, just a more convenient way of life. I mean, I don't want to stop shopping at Amazon any more than I wanted to start using film again after digital photography came out right? and all those people in the film industry started to struggle or all those people in the CD and music industry started to struggle after Napster came out. I didn't want to go back using that just to help them, right? That was, that was their problem and they had to be keep up with the market, you know, and, uh, and we, we see this. All, oh, I worked, in an, uh, I worked in a company as a consultant that did uh, educational publishing, like books and everything like that. And we talked about, what about the rise of ebooks? And it was all like, yeah, it's not really going to happen to us. You know, it's not going to affect us. But there were a lot of redundancies and that kind of stuff just happens. And usually when that stuff happens, it's the people who are not prepared. They're the ones who struggle, right? You have to, you know, once we're, we're all, we all have the potential of being thrown out of the ship and we have to swim and we have to learn how to swim. Which brings me to the second thing my kids and I talk about all the time. It's, it's something that I remember talking to my parents about, and you probably you know, talked to your parents about it or your kids talked about it. It's like, why do I have to learn so much of this rubbish at school? Why do I have to learn so many things that I'm not interested in, I don't plan on ever using? Like, you know, 
why do I have to learn algebra? I mean, for, we were in computers, so we know that algebra is important, but you know, why do I have to learn trigonometry? Why do I have to learn geography? Why do I have to learn you know, psychology? All these kind of things. And what I tell them is, you don't know what's coming you know, around the corner. You know, we are not just employees in training. We are, we are ninjas in training. We, are, you know, we have to fight the good fight. Right? We don't know what's coming around the corner. Right? And we have to make sure that we, that we have a broad spectrum of education. Our, I mean, our education is the only thing that we invest in that has any value to us going forward. We don't know what the, what the market's going to bring. Again, like I talked about, you know, if, if we stop making app income and we have to start selling to clients, that's fine. If clients stop uh, coming to us, then we might have to move on to something else. And I don't know what that's going to be yet, but at the time, I have to be... I have to make sure that I'm well-rounded and I can look around and all this kind of stuff. The one thing, and I, had a, I uh, shared a few emails with, with uh, somebody uh, today about this, the one thing that you definitely should invest in is your ability to market. And you may say, and this is one of the things that social media is important too, and I, I'm not that great with social media, right? But you know, eventually we're going to get to the point where there's fewer jobs for you know, more workers trying to compete for fewer jobs, and it's those people who know how to market themselves or their products, or or whatever, who have picked up that kind of experience, are going to be the ones who have an advantage going forward. You know, it's it's just it's just the way it is, and it's it's amazing how many people don't really see the importance of that, right? Anyway, I'm, I know I'm going on about a lot of possibly depressing things today, right? I think you know, when somebody asks me what should I learn, what's the next language I should learn, what's you know, what's the what's the next Thing, you know, I want to make sure that everything's set out. The system is not going to take care of you. In fact, there is no system, right? In a few, I mean, in a few situations. While I was in the army, there was a system. The army took care of you, right? There were, you weren't gonna, you weren't gonna walk in one day and the army tells you, "Hey, Private Ruley, you know, we had to make some cutbacks and you know, pack up your locker," right? That just didn't happen. They, they, gen, you know, slowly roll things out. And you also have the education industry, which is very much a, a regimented, you know, first you go here, then you go there, then you go there, kind of thing you know, and different government jobs and stuff like that. But for the most part, we're kind of all on our own, right? We can't worry about other people being out of work. We have to worry about ourselves being out of work. We have to make, worry about our children potentially being out of work because they don't understand the value of a proper education, right? And anything that you invest in yourself, anything that you can keep in terms of experience and education is going to be beneficial, even if it's not, even if you're learning the wrong thing. Even if you learn a technology that is not going to be used six months from now, you still build up that ability to learn and you always pick up insights from, from different things. One of the things I criticize junior developers about is they only learn what they think they need to know. They only, like if it's a, like a web application, they only know how to do a web page and connect to a database. They don't learn the error handling, any of the other kind of things. They'll get the big book, but they'll only read three chapters because they don't think the rest applies to them. But it all applies to us that we have to be well-rounded. Anyway, that's it for today. I'll talk to you guys next week.